having Casey come up and speak to everyone about uh, audience optimization, and then Scott will follow with A-B testing and how these two go hand in hand. So Casey, welcome. Little Dog Consulting. And for those who are new and have not met the Little Dog, Little Dog Bear is in the back. So. Bear. <laughs> He's the one who does the one marketing. held up in the middle right now. That's Bear. Uh, he goes with me everywhere. Exactly, uh, so we got here early, we were setting up the room, and Bear decided to go to the fourth floor. <laughs> on the elevator on his own. He's, he's getting older, it's okay. Uh, everybody knew where to bring him back, Teenager. so that's our right. Teenagers. Teenagers, yeah, exactly. So um, I am Casey Barnett, I am with Little Dog Consulting. I specialize in SEO um, for all types of businesses, but really working with agencies and some other groups on how to optimize their systems and optimize how they're doing everything. I'm gonna do a presentation today that's an Ignite style presentation. So if you have not, don't know what an Ignite presentation is, basically the slides advance automatically. I have no control. It's gonna go for five minutes. I believe there's 20 slides, that gives us five minutes, gives me about 15 seconds a slide. I think that's the math on it. And so if I get behind, I get behind. If I have to wait for the slides, we have to wait for the slides. But uh, the hope is that from noon yesterday to midnight last night, I figured out how to do this. And, uh, and we're ready to go. So what we're gonna be talking about, let's, let's go. All right, so when I talk about traffic, what comes to mind? And each person's business is completely different in this. So if I talk about traffic on the highway, you think about one thing. If I think about traffic going into a restaurant, what does that traffic look like? If I think about traffic going to a concert or a venue and trying to leave or trying to get in, those are all forms of traffic that we're trying to look at. When it comes to websites and it comes to business, traffic for traffic's sake is not good. You don't want all the traffic, you want the right traffic. So I'm from Colorado, in Denver, the stadiums being downtown sucks for traffic for everyone not going to the stadiums, right? And so it's the same thing when you're trying to get out of PNC here, right? Traffic sucks. So when we think about traffic, here's an example of someone in a window shopping at a men's store that may not be buying from a men's store. Maybe they aren't, probably not, but they might just be the wrong traffic for who's coming into the site or who's coming into your business. How can you optimize the traffic for your business? So everybody heard of the zipper model of traffic? How many people get mad when people blow by them in the right-hand lane? That's bad, don't get mad at them. The right thing to do is to use the zipper, is to go as long as you can. Everybody can keep their speed higher if you do this. So optimizing your traffic so that it gets to the right places in your site and the right lane that you need to be is what you want to be doing. So let's take a quick case study on this. There's an electric supply company. They sell supplies to electric contractors. They sell their products online. What's the optimal traffic for them to go after? Okay, we want, what we don't want, we don't need a viral vid post to go out for these guys. It won't help them. They're trying to go after selling products filling out contact information and getting people to call them, right? They have some micro goals down at the bottom, of adding our cart for the item, getting on the email list, and viewing multiple pages and products. So our hope here is that we can get them to do these things when they come. So, that was pretty good. That was nice. How do we get to some smart goals? How do we figure out what conversions we're looking for from the people who come to our sites, who come to our businesses? How do we get the right people there? So when we pick out goals that are specific and measurable, we can actually track them over time and then we can also modify them to make sure they are the most optimum for us. So we're gonna talk about conversion rate. So conversion rate's simple. It's the number of times a goal is completed by the number of people who could have completed that goal, right? So someone going and selling back in third door, 100 knocks, 10 people answer the door, five let them in and they sell the one. Those are your conversion rates for the different areas, right? Our goal with conversion rate optimization is to bump up the conversion rate, but not worry about all the traffic as it comes in, okay? So we're trying to get to a point where the traffic that's coming in is the best traffic for us so we can speak to our audience correctly. So close. <laughs> so there are two ways to analyze this. We have the quantitative method and we have the qualitative method. And you can't do one without the other, okay? So, yes, we need to count how much everything is happening, but we also need to know why that thing is happening. 
So qualitative is, or quantitative is permission and engagement. We want to a share of the voice. We're looking for leads, actions, and cost efficiency when it comes to that. For the qualitative voice, we need to think about tone of voice, the service we're providing, the content quality, and customer insights. How many times have you been to a restaurant where the food was awesome, everything was good, but the waiter sucked, and you didn't want to go back? That's qualitative, right? So when we talk about quantitative analysis, in analytics, we can put in as many goals as you want along the roll, along for everything. And if we have a measure for it, this tells us a lot, but it doesn't tell us why. So adding in that why from the qualitative look is really important. So Einstein was pretty good. He figured that out, that everything that can be counted, not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. And so how do we make sure as we're doing our analysis, we are keeping track of that? So I'll pause this again. Three. Part of me is hoping that I got all the all the changes in. Hey Chris, thanks for the thanks for the cartoon. So things to avoid. We want to avoid guesses and hunches and feelings. Um, is the other guy doing it just copying a competitor? They may not have they may have been guessing as well. The biggest paycheck isn't always right. Try to avoid that. And also, casting a wide net may get you something out of done luck, but you won't be able to do it again. So we want to be able to do it again. So now we're going to get into A-B testing. How do you know the change you made or the things you're doing are actually working, right? So the conversion rate optimization comes in where we work on multiple areas of our websites and of our stuff and our business to make sure that we're doing the optimal things. You may not have noticed, but usually the most expensive item on a restaurant menu is the second item. It's usually not the first because they found people go to the second item most often and they feel better about it. And they sell more of that item in most cases. Things you want to improve, headlines, sales copy, design layouts, graphics, forms. These are all things you can test separately. You can change them all in one. I suggest not. I suggest changing them a little bit at a time. But as you go through, this is a full cycle. You want to know what your goals are. You want to, you want to check them. You want to go through and analyze them measure those, those results, go back, apply them, and then rinse and repeat. How many times can you go back through this and continue to optimize your site? When you're optimizing, you're never really done if someone else is competing with you, right? So we're always working on this. So here's a real life example. We went from restrooms are for customers only to, hey, you might not be a customer, but we have the best coffee, maybe you wanna buy one, right? A whole better answer when you come in and pretty applicable to what's going on in the world today, right? So that's it, I'm Casey, that was a five minute presentation. So, any questions real quick? We're gonna do some questions at the end as well, with Scott's gonna be covering some stuff as well that ties in here. So we can hold questions for that, or if anybody had any questions, I'm happy to ask. Perfect, let us, go ahead. Should you say, order your coffee right now, push this button, and only be waiting for them as they came out of the bathroom? I would absolutely A-B <laughs> test that. I mean, it's worth A-B testing it. I mean, they've, they've, there have like been many plus. studies. There's been many things that have proven that making bathrooms for customers only actually hurts your business in almost every case. Um, not only does it do it for people just don't stop buying, they don't have an opportunity to buy from you, but they, they literally will avoid going, to your, going in that area if they know they can't get access to a bathroom for whatever else they're doing. And the one time that they don't pay, you lose them for all the other times. So keeping that in mind. But yeah, adding, I would A-B test that. You know, I wouldn't put it on like the men's bathroom and the, not the women's bathroom. No, you definitely yeah. do it on both. So I'd do it on both, yeah. So <coughs> anybody else? Yeah. Classic A-B testing usually presents the, 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 the testing group with two choices on a randomized basis, right? Because that way you don't know that you, you kind of exclude any sort of uh, non-obvious behavior. Classical A-B testing typically has a group presented with choices on a randomized basis. So for example, in Google Ads, right, where there's a, a, a catchy phrase versus a not catchy phrase, and you sort of randomly are throwing those out to people. How do you implement that on a website kind of basis? Do you actually have two parallel pages that are randomly loaded when the person clicks within the website? So there are many ways to do it. There are programs that allow for that. There are systems that allow for you to have multiple landing pages depending on where you come in. You can randomize your links coming in from the other ad networks and other places as well. Some of it can just be down and dirty, you just make two pages and you, you supply them randomly through or you run one for a week, you run another one for a week, it's not perfect but you can get there. I think it comes down to budget, I think it comes down to how much you're willing to spend on going after 
the different areas. Scott's going to get into a lot more on the AV mm -hmm. side, and so I'll let him really speak to that. And he's his company. That's what they do. Uh, they're they're doing split testing within everything, and he has all that experience that I have used a bit of within the companies that I've worked with. But he's seeing it on a on a much more macro scale. Anybody else? Awesome. Perfect. Thanks, guys.